Hello friends, myself Professor Sanjay Rohit. I would like to extend a warm welcome to you on my YouTube channel. I would like to thanks everyone who has subscribed my channel and encourage you to do so if you have not already subscribed it. Please subscribe it so that you will get a new video notification earliest. Friends, today we are going to talk about management of femoral diaphyseal fracture using intramedullary pins in canines. In the clinical posture series, this is my third lecture. Femoral diaphyseal fracture. Fracture of the shaft of the femur is common in dogs owing to the large and powerful muscle group surrounding the shaft of the femur. It is difficult for close reduction and attend the external immobilization. These type of the cases are diagnosed based on the history, clinical examination, radiographic examinations. And hematobiochemical examinations are essential to assess the normal health status of the animal. Radiographic examinations. Two radiographic views are essential cuneo caudal. Second one is medio lateral. If required, treat the patient. If the temperament of the patient is not good, animal is furious or having the severe pain, we should treat the animals first, then take the radiographs. Radiographs of the Contralateral limbs are useful to assess the normal bone length and diameter of the marrow. These are two view of the radiographs. This one is medio lateral view. Medio lateral view. This one is caudal view. The diameter of the marrow cavity as well as the length of the bone is measured in. Contralateral limbs. Intramedullary pinning. Intramedullary pinning is the sound and economical method of internal fixation. Pin provide axial alignment and stability, but the little rotational stability. Stigma pins and K wire are generally used in canine practice. Pin provide three point fixation. Anatomically reduce the fracture segment and stabilize the bone. The internal pinning is combined with cyclage wire in case of the long oblique fracture. Internal pin can be combined with external fixation. In case of the transverse and short oblique fracture to neutralize the rotational and axial compressive forces. The diameter of the femoral marrow cavity should be measured. The diameter of the femoral marrow cavity is narrower at the proximal end while the wider distally. The lowest point is called isthmus. It is located within the proximal third of the bone. Femur of the canines is normally 
crowd in canal to caudal direction dimension of the pin should be 70 to 80% of the isthmus of the medullary cavity this is the location of the isthmus this is the narrowest point of the medullary cavity it is located in the proximal third of the bone and the diameter of the intermedullary pin should be 70 to 80% at the diameter of the isthmus two or more pin can be used in adult animals when we are using two or more pins this technique is known as stair pinning failure of intermediary pinning are related to mechanical factors such as pin migration pin bending pin loosening pin is inserted into the medullary cavity by using pin chuck or drill machine pin can be inserted using two technique retrograde technique and normo grade technique retrograde technique when we are inserting the pin through the flexor site that is known as retrograde intermediary pinning when we are using or inserting the intermediary pin from the one end of the bone that is known as normal grade intermediary pinning the diagram showing the retrograde intermediary pinning in which first inserted through the flexor site then redirect the pin into the medullary cavity of the proximal segment then inserted into the distal segment this is the retrograde intermediary pinning equipment needed general surgical pack along with the orthopedic pack is required in the orthopedic pack to perform the intermediary pinning certain special instruments are required these are bone holding forceps jacob pin chuck low speed power drill intermediary pins of different diameter and lengths orthopedic measuring goes scale to measure the length and goes of the intermediary pins orthopedic wire wire passer wire tightener wire cutter and pin cutter these are some orthopedic instruments that are required to perform the intermediary pinning in canines these are the instruments this one is the bone holding forceps bone holding forceps this one is pin chuck jacob pin chuck this one is steinman pin this one is k wire pointed on the both ends steinman pin pointed on the one end blunt on the other end this one is pin cutter this one is drill machine this one is orthopedic wire this one is wire cutter or wire tight both functions are in 
single instruments wire cutter wire tightener this is also known as wire twister one is wire passer this one is scale orthopedic measuring gauge scale used to measure the length as well as diameter of the intermediary pins now we discuss about the anesthesia general anesthesia is required to perform the intermediary pinning in canines to induce the general anesthesia 12 hours of feed is required after this inject the atropine sulfate at dose rate of the 0.02 mg per kg body weight intramuscularly after the 10 minutes of this inject xylazine hydrochlorides 1 mg per kg body weight intramuscularly then after the adequate sedation inject ketamine hydrochloride at dose rate of the 5 mg per kg body weight intramuscularly then maintain on the isoflurane anesthesia you can use the various anesthetic combinations that are available depend on the availability of the anesthetic agents and facilities as well as your expertization in particular anesthetic combinations anatomic consideration trochanteric fossa is directly in the line with the intermediary canal allowing the normograde or retrograde placement of the intermediary piece data trochanter is 90 degree to the patella adductor magnus muscles attached to the caudal surface of the femur and serve as guide for rotational alignment now we discuss about operative procedures restrain the animal in lateral recumbency leg is surgically prepared by shaving scrubbing and painted with the povidone iodine solution then incision is made on the cannulatal border of the femoral shaft from the level of the greater trochanter to the level of the patella as per the location of the fracture site on this line from this point to this point as per the location of the fracture site we made incision then the superficial fascia is retracted junction between the fascia lata and biceps femoris muscles is carefully identified by looking at the action of the fibers the fibers of the biceps femoris muscles are run canally and downward directions while the fibers of the tensor fascia lata are directed orally and downward directions so basis of this direction of the muscles fibers we can easily identify the muscles then incision is made on the tensor fascia lata along the canial border of the biceps femoris muscles here this one biceps femoris muscles caudally and vastus lateralis and intermedius muscles on the canal surface of the femoral shaft are retracted canally by freeing the 
loose fascia between the meniscus and the bone. Take care to avoid the unnecessary detachment of the adductor magnus muscles as it attached to the facies aspera of the femur and is the major blood supply to the fractured bone. Here, the biceps femoris muscles is retract totally while tensor fascia lata, tensor fascia lata, vastus lateralis and intermediates are retract cranially and femoral shaft are exposed. Then the proximal and distal fascia segments can be identified by combination of dental retraction and probing. Proximal segment is pulled out from the incision, then insert the intermediary pin into the proximal femur in retrograde manner, means through the fascia site we insert the intermediary pin in proximal segment of the fractured femur. Extend the hip and adduct the limbs when retrograding the intermediary pin to avoid the injuring the sciatic nerve. We should extend the hip and adduct the limbs. Redirect and retract the pin within the medullary canal of the proximal segment. Reduce the pressure by lifting the bone ends from the incision and bringing them into contact. Reduce the long oblique fracture by extracting the bone segment and approximating the fracture surface. Use the pointed reduction forceps to manipulate and reduce the fractured bone. Maintain the reduction manually for the transverse, transverse fracture and use pointed reduction force for the oblique fractures. Reduce commutated non reducible fractures by distracting the distal end of the intermediary pin and aligning, aligning the major segments of the bone, like this. With the bone end into contact, slowly push the bone segment back into the normal position. Now, stabilization. Drive the intermediary pin distally to sit in the femoral condyle to maintain the reduction. Intermediary pin and multiple cyclase wire use in case of the long oblique fractures. External immobilization technique can be used for additional strength. For the oblique fractures, we can use cyclase wiring. Validation of pin placement. Location of tip of the pin is assessed by comparing with a pin held outside the bone. Pin placement can be checked with intraoperative radiography if the facility is available cutting the pin. Protruding part of the pin is cut as close as possible to the level or below the level of greater trochanter to avoid the trauma to the muscle and sciatic nerve. This level will allow pin removal if necessary in the future. On this margin, we should cut the pin.
if the pin is difficult to cut close with this method it can be cut prior to sitting into the distal femur then hammer it after prior cutting then we should hammer to sit into the distal segment Fascia lata and fascia of biceps femoris muscles are sutured using eligible suture materials in simple continuous suture pattern. Simple continuous suture patterns. Then the particular suture using the eligible suture materials. Then is sutured using the known eligible suture materials. Simple interrupted by simple interrupted or horizontal mattress horizontal mattress suture pattern now medicinal management antiseptic dressing of the suture line regularly antibiotic therapy for five days analgesic given into low dose after the operation after the intermediate pinning as per need calcium and vitamin D supplementation for one month suture should be removed on day 10th post operatively precaution to avoid penetrating the Sciatic now, the limb should be held in extended position and adduct position while the pin exists the tokentic fossa. Avoid the femoral head and stifle joint injury with the intermediary pins. The range of the motion of the stifle joint should be evaluated to detect the pin interference in the stifle joint. Angular and rotational alignment should be monitored. Post-operative evaluation. Radiograph should be evaluated for fracture reduction and implant placement. Radiographic assessment is performed every 4 to 8 weeks until bone healing is confirmed. 3 to 4 months follow up of the radiograph check the bone healing. Intermediary pin should be removed when the fracture has healed. This is the fracture. This is showing the placement of the intermediary pin. Good alignment. This is showing the post-operative radiographs showing the Kalas formation and healing phase of the bone. Expected outcome. Bone healing is usually seen in 6 to 12 weeks depending on texture and signalment of the animal. Animal usually experience a good return to the function. Pin removal. Sedation and local anesthesia are required. Aseptic procedure should be followed by saving, scrubbing, and painted the area with oidon iodine solution. Then made a stab incision over the top of the pin and retracting the pin by pulling with water, turn, back, and forth. After the removal of the pin, just suture the incision by one or two simple interrupted sutures. Complication with femoral top fracture. There may be no union, mal alignment with mal union, sciatic, neuropexia, quadriceps contacture or osteomyelitis. These type of the complications are 
seen in the structure of the shaft of the femur. Now we discuss about non-union. Non-union may be due to the biological and mechanical errors, may be due to improper handling of the muscle and soft tissues, may be due to poor surgical technique or may be due to suboptimal implants. Mal alignment with mal union. Mal alignment are diagnosed based on the X-ray. This is common complications in case of the flexure of the shaft of the femur in canines. Rotational mal alignment is seen in case of the comminuted fractures. Mild loss of the length or moderate mal alignment on the sagittal plane known as procurvatum or recurvatum does not affect the patient's functional outcome. Whereas the mal alignment on the axial or frontal plane that is known as Vedas or vulgus plane can severely compromise the limb function. Sciatic neuropexia, most often associated with the retrograde insertion of intermedullary pin or with the proximal intermedullary pin migration. Here is the sciatic now, this one when the pin is placed through the retrograde manner or pin is formally migrated, that may cause the injury to the sciatic nerve and cause the sciatic neura extra. Retrograde pinning, the leg should be held in abduction and slight extension position. After placement, the intermediary pin should be cut short at or below the level of the trochanter to avoid the injury to the sciatic nerve. Now we discuss about quadriceps contexture. The complication of the distal diaphyseal fractures in the young and growing dogs, it shows the known weight bearing lameness and hyper extended stifle. The causes are aggressive surgical approach, poor soap tissue handling, inadequate fixation and external coaptation such as splinting. There is no surgical cure for the quadriceps contexture. Osteomyelitis if there is any infection in the bone that may be due to the reasons related with the aseptic surgery, may be related with the implant or there may be related with the osteopathic care. So we should take care and maintain the aseptic conditions. Now quiz time based on today's lecture we discuss some questions for you. You are requested to solve these questions and at the end of this video, we also provide the answers of these questions so that you will check these yourself. Question number one, for the selection of diameter of intermediary pin, the diameter of the medullary cavity should be measured at. Option A, proximal diaphysis. Option B, middle diaphysis. Option C, distal diaphysis. Option D, isthmus. Question number 2. The diameter of intramedullary pin should be dash percent of diameter of femoral medullary cavity at isthmus is 
ऑप्शन ए थर्टी टू फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑप्शन बी फिफ्टी टू सेवेंटी परसेंट ऑप्शन सी सेवेंटी टू एटी परसेंट ऑप्शन डी एटी टू हंड्रेड परसेंट क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री फॉलोइंग विच इज नॉट टेक्निक ऑफ इंट्रामेडुलरी पिनिंग ऑप्शन ए रिट्रोग्रेड ऑप्शन बी नॉर्मो ग्रेड ऑप्शन सी अपग्रेड ऑप्शन डी नॉन ऑफ दीज क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर फोर इंटरनल फेशन फेक्सर्ड फीमर इन ए डॉग कैन बी अप्रोच बाई ऑप्शन ए केनियो लेटरल अप्रोच ऑप्शन बी प्यूडो लेटरल अप्रोच ऑप्शन सी एंटीरियर अप्रोच ऑप्शन डी मीडियल अप्रोच क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ चॉइस फॉर ओल्ड नॉन यूनाइटेड फ्रैक्चर ऑफ साफ ऑफ फीमर इज ऑप्शन ए कंप्रेशन प्लेटिंग ऑप्शन बी बोन ग्राफ्टिंग ऑप्शन सी इंट्रामेडुलरी पिनिंग ऑप्शन डी कंप्रेशन प्लेटिंग विथ बोन ग्राफ्टिंग now this is the answer time these are the answer question number 1 option d question number 2 option c question number 3 option c question number 4 option a question number 5 option d Thank you for watching this video. If you have any doubt, please see the video again and again. If you have further the doubts, you are requested to comments in the comments box. I will reply. Thank you for watching this video. You are again request to like, comments, share, and subscribe this video. Thanks.